Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome all of you, new members, new visitors, and long time members, young and old, and male and female. We are all here together. Our Lord God, the Good Shepherd, led us this morning, these green pastures and still waters. We want to praise our God and worship our God. I'm Eun Hye Che, pastor of Glenview United Methodist Church. I welcome all of you in person here and online. We unite our hearts in God's heart. Now, I want to invite you to rise and we pass God's peace to you, to each other. We can bow and say God's peace to you, or we can wave each other and say God's peace to you. Please remain standing and we join in the call to worship. Come, let us worship our God. Let us lift up our songs, our prayers, our praises. Come, let us honor Christ to Jesus. Let us love Christ with our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. Come, let us be filled with the spirit of the living God. Breathe in us, breath of God. Be seated. Now we join in the Lenten confession prayer. Let us pray. God of glory and God of grace, bring us to our senses, if that means shining your light fiercely until our inner eyes hurt and our ugly ways stand exposed then so be it. We do not look for an easy way, but the hard way of truth and healing. Slowly but surely, we come to you. 
In your arms, may we find the grace to let go, to accept your forgiveness, and receive restoration. This we pray in the name of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Good morning. It is now time for the children to come up as the congregation sings this little light of mine. friends. Do any of you have a favorite type of music you like to listen to? Mm-hmm. You guys don't know what music is? <laughs> Disney? Heavy metal? Show tunes. I can, I can do that. Have you ever heard of something called congregational rap? No? Yeah? You have? Have you heard of rap? Yes, but is it like in Hamilton where like, oh. Yes, so it's like we're gonna do a Hamilton rap show this morning in church and I need your guys' help, okay? But not just you, everybody. So I have the lyrics to Go Tell It On The Mountain rap edition. You ready? So you guys, can you help me out here? Can you make sure everybody gets a copy of this? And when you come back up, we're going to go through it, and then the congregation's going to join us, okay? So I'm going to give you each some, you guys got to go make sure everybody has a copy of these. Here you go. We'll give you a couple minutes. Um, Trevor, can you get the choir? Make sure everybody in the choir has it, because I think they, and pastor too, because I think they're going to, they're going to be very helpful in this. Give everybody a minute to get it. You can look over the words as you, as they're giving it, handing it out. You need more, Emma? You ran out. I think Trevor might have some extras. I gave him a lot for the choir. Okay. Everybody have a copy. We're getting there. We're getting there. You have three extras. Okay. Well, you guys all need one, too. Yep, Trevor, Trevor's helping. Okay. Well, finishing, I'm going to do a quick version of this here. Okay. And then everybody in the congregation, including the kids, are going to join me. You guys ready? Okay, you don't have to, to rap this first time. Thanks, team. You don't have to rap this first time, but can I get everybody with a snap? Ready? 
The people feared and trembled when Jesus healed them all. But when he said, I'm with you, they joined him standing tall. The blind man couldn't see the light upon his face. When Jesus came to him, he showed him earth and space. He traveled all around and showed great care to friends. And even now today, his love just never ends. Go tell it on the mountain, hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, his miracles will share. You guys ready? Yeah, we got it. You guys ready? Let me hear the snap. Here we go. Nice and loud, everybody. And a one, two, three, four. The people feared and trembled when Jesus healed them all. But when he said, I'm with you, they joined him standing tall. The blind man couldn't see the light upon his face. When Jesus came to him, he showed him earth and space. He traveled all around and showed great care to friends. And even now today, his love just never ends. Go tell it on the mountain, hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, his miracles will share. I think that was pretty good, everybody. Now, let's say a quick prayer about that, and you're going to learn about the story in Sunday school. Here we go. Join me in a prayer. Dear Jesus, Without you in our lives, it would be dark. We thank you for opening our eyes and giving us light. Help us share that light with the rest of the world today and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's have the Sunday school. just do the normal version of Psalm 23 um, in your hymnals please or in your yeah hymnal open up to page 754 please Shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. Leads me beside the still waters, restores my life. Leads me in right paths for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff they comfort me. I shall Prepare a table for, before me in the presence of my enemies. My head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The New Testament reading is Ephesians 5, 8 through 14, and can be found in your pew Bible on page 1822. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, 
and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. I'll be reading selections from John beginning with John 9, 1 through 7, continuing with 18 through 23, and 35 through 41. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. They still not be did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. 
He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders, who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What? Are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin, but now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
please be seated. What a beautiful psalm, beautiful hymn, beautiful praise. Psalm 23, the Lord is my good shepherd. Please join me in a prayer. Oh God, we arrived here already. We are not looking around anymore. We are here, green pastures and still waters. You prepared for us. We are tired, but now we rest here. We see hope, faith, and love all restored here. Thank you, God. And now we lift up our hearts again, praise you, and meditate your words in our hearts. Bless our meditations, O oh God. Amen. For Israelite King David, this praise song we call Psalm 23 was like the Lord's prayer for us that we memorize and recite it not only public worship like this, but also whenever we don't know how to pray, we pray this Lord's Prayer. Same way for Israelites, Psalm 23, their go-to praise song. I believe many of you learned this Psalm 23 in Sunday school when you were really young and still memorize it. At a memorial service or a funeral service, sometimes we print this, Psalm 23, in the bulletin, in, during the, in the middle of a worship order to recite it together. One time after the service was done, some people who was not one of the family members of the deceased came to me and kind of like this accused me that I put the wrong one. And right after funeral service, I was kind of shocked, and I said, what do you mean? And I told that it was Psalm 23, and the family chose it to do that. And the man, the, the, he was upset that it was not the Psalm 23 from the King James Version that he knew by heart. All the different versions of Psalm 23 disturbed his spirit. At that moment, I was not exactly happy to listen to his unreasonable complaint, but soon I understood that it was that important for him, important enough for him to mention, bring it to it, the pastor. And I said, yeah, I understood that. And our hymnal, there are two different. There is, in the middle of him, there is King James Version. And the, at the end of the hymnal, there is the Psalm 23. We, today we sang and we read together. For you, how and why is the Psalm 23 is important? How and why? For that person, it was important because it should be King James Version. For you, why? For me, just one verse of it, verse four, grabs my heart and shakes it every time I hear it. It says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Even at this age, I'm not really sure I know, I'm not sure what's the darkest valley, evil, and what it means, you are with me. Just reading it, hearing it, and thinking about it gives me tremendous, a lot of hope, knowing that it is not just me who sometimes goes through the darkest valley, facing evil, and experiences God's presence there. Actually, we have walked through many, many dark valleys as a nation in the recent history. One day, 
After early dinner, I just sat down and watched the evening news. Usually, I don't watch evening news, but that day, I don't know why, I sat down and watched evening news. That day's news was about the recent fallout of several banks. It was scary. And possible financial meltdown. It was scary again. And the attack on the US, our drone by Russian jet. It was really scary. Another news on some big and small murder cases and very scary. They were all there in just one evening news. Usually news didn't bother me because I felt I was immune by all bad news because it's there every day. And I thought, I'm immune by that, about that, and I'm okay, I thought. But that day, listening to news on and on, all those scary news, I felt like a huge cloud covered over me, and I felt hopeless not just for myself, but for the whole humanity. I looked at Chris, my husband sitting there, and told him that I didn't know how much this one human body could take all the stress of a major crisis. I felt all, those, all the stress in my body. We counted them from September 11th in 2001, Iraq war in 2003, Dakom bubbles in 2005, the great financial meltdown in 2008, and coronavirus pandemic in 2020, which dragged for three, over three years, and all other political shenanigans mass killings by gun violence, and unheard of natural disasters, and climate changes. All of a sudden, I cried quietly, thinking how we, how we could take any more crisis in these fragile human bodies. Stress is not just stay here, it takes whole our fragile human bodies. I felt that we are in this dark valley together as the humanity. As the king of Israel, King David's dark valleys were not just his personal experience. Whenever he walked through a dark valley, the whole nation was, went through a crisis with him because he was the king, King David. Same with us, that sometimes we go through a dark valley and we may feel that it is my fault or it happens only to me or you personally. But no, no. Not because you did something wrong, you experienced a dark time but because we are together in human conditions. In today's Gospel reading, there is a blind man who was blind from birth. Jesus' disciples right away assumed that that was his fault or his sin or his parent's sin. They just right away assumed this personal sin. Jesus simply said, no, nope. Jesus said, no, nope. neither this man nor his parents sinned. Being born blind is one of difficult human conditions, such as being born mute, stillborn death, miscarriages, premature birth, being born with some generic illness, or being born in extreme poverty. All these are no one's fault or sin. Though they live with or live in difficult conditions, difficult human conditions, and they and their families are not, they or their families are not outside of God's grace. 
Actually, in contrast to our assumptions, God intensely works with them, in them, and for them, in their dark valleys, in their dark times. Also, God works hard for us, for you and me, in our dark times. Jesus told his disciples he was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. Please listen carefully. Jesus didn't say he was born blind to show God's work. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said he was born blind. Born blind, a simple statement. So that God's work might be revealed in him. This blind man is not a plot, a tool, showing off amazing God's work to the world. He's not. When he was still blind, still in the dark valley, God's work was revealed in him, in him. So many times after Jesus healed the sick, he told the people not to say anything about it because God's work was revealed in them not to show others. Jesus was sent to do God's work. So he spat on the ground, made mud with his saliva, and spread the mud on the blind man's eyes. I believe it took a long time and lots of effort to make enough mud with his saliva to put on this blind man's both eyes. Jesus truly worked hard for this blind man. Then he said to him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam. This blind man went and washed it. Now here we see that both Jesus and, the, and this man did their works. Both of men did their part, their works, to reveal God's work in him, this blind man. And the man walked out of the dark valley to the light. He is now able to see, praise the Lord, but some religious leaders in this story were not happy. They first accused the man that he was a liar, and then they called his parents and accused them that they sinned. And then they accused Jesus that he walked on Sabbath day. So they excommunicated this man. God's work was revealed in him and so he could see Jesus as the prophet and then finally the Messiah. But the same God's works was not revealed in those religious leaders. I believe if those religious leaders realized that, they were also in dark valleys, meaning going through difficult human conditions with other humans they were in there in same conditions, difficult human conditions, and they realized that they need the Messiah. They could experience God's work in them and could see the light, the light of hope, the light of love, the light of a new beginning, and the light of salvation. In today's New Testament reading, Paul says to efficient Christians that they were darkness. Paul didn't say they were in darkness. Paul said they were darkness. And now in the Lord, they are light. They are light. When we were yet darkness, Jesus called us out of darkness. As Jesus walked for that blind man, and the blind man did his part of God's work in trust of Jesus, we also have works to do for ourselves, our part of work we have to do for ourselves and for others. Jesus called us, we are the light of the world. So 
rather than watching evening news and being fearful. We do our part of work, our part of God's work in the world in trust of Jesus Christ. To the religious leaders who didn't know they were blind, Jesus told them their sins were still remained. Whoever thinks they are blind may see, and whoever thinks they may see still remained blind. That depressing evening news was a blessing for me because I finally realized that it was not just me who, need, who needed faith, hope, and love, and the Messiah for the whole humanity. We are in these difficult human conditions together. And God works for us in those difficult times. God works for us. And we also have our part, our work to do. Thanks be to God. And now we prepare our hearts for this common prayer time. I want to remind you that there are prayer request card you can use and we pray together. Let us pray. Oh God, we cry out in our darkness. We cry out to you, help us. And you hear our cries. And you reach out to us. And now we realize that so many people, humanity, suffering together in these difficult human conditions. And we hold each other's hands. And we receive your healing power. You recover the sight. You recover the light. And you lead us, still waters and green pastures. And so how we are here, we arrived in this place. Your still waters, your living water, your living bread is abundant here. Oh God, give us courage that we do our part of your work, God's work in this world to bring out your light to the world. Thank you, God. The gift of hope, faith, and love you give to us, to whole humanity. Thank you, God, for resurrection and eternal life, your promise for us. Thank you, God. We will unite in you the great light. And now in this silent moment, we pray to you for people who need your light, who need your work for them, your work of salvation. O oh Lord God in Jesus Christ, we see because we believe in you, our Messiah, and now we join in the prayer you taught all of us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Please rise in your spirit or body and we sing the closing hymn. Seated. Uh, I invite Becky Lederland, the first announcement. Sometimes in life, we take a look around and see everything that surrounds us. And then in deep reflection, we ask ourselves a soul-searching question. What is all this stuff? The boxes sit in the basement tonight, many cobwebs to be seen. The bookshelves are overflowing, things in the closet are looking green. DVDs collecting dust next to albums like Ticket to Ride. But you can't keep it all. Heaven knows I've tried. It's time to act. It's let us see. You're the volunteers you want to be. Be brave, be strong, it's time to grow. It's time, you know, to let it go, let it go. 
It'll set your spirit free. Let it go. Let it go. You last wore that in 1993. Take a breath. It's going to be okay. Bring it all to us. The kids don't want that stuff anyway. can't take them with you anyway. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> and then we have the second announcement by Dana Kwiatkowski. <laughs> She, she did dance. <laughs> what are you going to sing, Donna? I, <laughs> I dance, I don't sing. <laughs> so I just want to let you know that the hospitality table is provided by the reactivated Friends in Touch Visitation Ministry. There are pamphlets that will be out there. Please pick them up and take a read. Um, we are sharing our mission is sharing the light of God's love with those who are unable to be actively involved in the life of the Glenview United Methodist Church. Um, our goal is to visit those who perhaps were a part of the congregation and no longer can be due to health reasons um, or somebody who just needs a friendly face every once in a while. Um, the brochure uh, gives you more details about what we do. Uh, if you would like to become a friend in touch, then you can contact either me or the pastor or Ethel. Um, you can also fill out the form that's on these uh, little brochures. Um, so we hope you enjoy the hospitality and please consider becoming a friend to someone in need. Thank you. Thank you. Not only we pray for each other, with each other, we also visit when you have difficult times. And please contact Anna or Ethel or myself. We are so happy to this caring ministry together. Thank you so much. If you didn't sign up to volunteer rummage sale, please do so. It's everybody do together. It's not hard labor. We laugh together. We walk together and laugh together. That way we help the church's ministries also. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And next Sunday, I will be on vacation. And our district superintendent, Reverend uh, Brittany Isaac, she will preach here and invite other people that yes, will preach here. Wednesday, we are still in Lenten season. Wednesday morning, there is a Lenten lectionary study. If you want to participate there, please let me know. I will give you the Zoom link. And Wednesday evening, 6 o'clock, please come to church. We eat together, and then we talk. We just talk together about Jesus table fellowship ministry. It's a very light dinner and light conversations in our light hearts. Know that 
we go these dark valleys together as whole humanity. And God knows that. And God is with you, with me, and with all of us. God leads us to green pastures. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.